For most of my life, my approach to habits looked a little bit like this. I would get really, really, really frustrated with myself. I would be in a place where I was feeling a lack of energy, I was feeling that everything was chaotic, I was totally overwhelmed. I would get in this space of yuck. And from that space of yuck, I would be desperate to claw myself out of that space. And so I would make an overly ambitious plan. I would write out my detailed daily schedule minute for minute. I would come up with 10 habits that I was gonna do every single day for the next 90 days. I would invent all of these initiatives. I would do all of these challenges that were extremely difficult because in the moment when I was feeling lost and stuck and overwhelmed, it felt like the more ambitious the solution, the more relief I felt in that moment. Even though I wasn't enacting those habits yet, even though I wasn't following that daily schedule, the possibility of it in the future made me feel a little bit better in that moment and that's what I really needed. Now, obviously, this doesn't lead to sustainable habit formation because the cycle would just repeat itself. I would do that habit list that I came up with of 10 perfect habits for three or four days, maybe even a week, and then I would get totally burnt out, I would zap all my energy, and I would be right back in the space of suck, coming up with a new plan once again. So today, I wanna to talk to you about the number one shift that made my habit formation journey way more sustainable. And that is this, planning your habits so that they are something that you can do on your worst day, not an effort to create your best day. One of the things I like to remind our clients is that functional beats optimal every single time. And when we're in a place where there's things in our life that don't feel functional, shooting for optimal, like I talked about, can feel really good but then we end up right back in the span of dysfunctional. So instead of trying to craft the perfect day or the perfect set of habits that's going to make your life 100% better, I want you to think about increasing your minimum baseline. What would it be like to pick three or four habits that simply make your worst day a little bit better? Essentially, I want you to plan for the version of you that is struggling. I want you to protect and love and think about the version of you in the future that is struggling. Because thinking that that struggle magically disappears or that your 2.0 self never has bad days is completely unrealistic. So here's some concrete ways for how to do exactly that. Let's say that you've come up with a new habit and let's say this habit that you want to do is to work out 45 minutes every day. First, what I want you to do is I want you to write down all of the possible conditions that could make that really difficult. And I want you to really think worst case scenario here. I want you to think about what if something major, a major deadline was dropped on you at work. I want you to think about what if there was a, a major winter snowstorm that restricted your access to the gym. If you were in the worst case scenario, if the circumstances around you were working against your ability to do that habit, what level would you need it to be at in order to make that habit? Can your habit weather your worst days? Will it survive in your most intense mental tornado? So for example, if you had that 45 minute workout, maybe scaling 45 minutes at the gym down to 15 minutes of intentional movement makes it something that you can do on the days where you're feeling really exhausted, on the days where you're sore, on the days where your kids are at home because they're sick. Whatever it might be for you, does that habit work on your worst day as best as it does or as much as it does on your best day? Tip number two here is to make your habits just a little bit more flexible. This is one of the reasons I recently switched from having a habit of a daily walk to having a habit of 30 minutes of movement. Movement is an umbrella term. It has a lot of different things that can fall underneath it. I can go to the gym, I can do yoga, I can take a walk with my dog, I can go hiking. There's tons of options and so that gives my brain natural flexibility that's gonna allow that habit to happen in more situations. Another way that you could do this is to think about giving yourself more or less time for a certain thing or using time allocation rather than task allocation. 
So what I mean by that is instead of saying, I'm going to clean the kitchen every day, you might say, I'm going to do 10 minutes of tidying. And maybe some days that is the kitchen, but maybe one of the days the bedroom really needs clean and then you're able to devote that habit to that thing. So those are my two tips for you. And in general, to go back, the number one mindset shift that I had, the number one thing that helped me to actually make my habits functional was to focus on making them work for the worst version of me, the struggling version of me, the version of me where everything is exploding around her, make sure that my habits are still something that would help her and that's something that she is capable of. I will see you in the next video.